Hello everyone, and welcome back to Crash Bandicoot. Hope you're doing well out there. Once again, we are joined by Wolf Ricana. Yoha. As we continue to torment myself. Without further ado, let's launch into Cortex Power. Again, I hope you are all doing well out there. Because with each passing day, I realize just how bad I am at platformers. And worst part is... There are even there are people even worse than me. People who were paid to review the games and actually made articles that said that this was the Dark Souls of platformers. Yeah. Again. I mean, You'd think they would have people that were actually, you know, fans of the series, probably played it when they were kids, things like that. But, uh, when you get people to say that, you're basically just trying to make it so people don't buy. Well, not necessarily. That It could also be an endearing thing if people aren't the Dark Souls. I guess. And yeah, I'm not going to be bothering too much with the boxes because I already saw what the hint. Oh, you can get even a newer path if you had blue gems. So yeah, we're not going to get all the boxes here, even though there are only 42. Yeah. But yeah, think about that. There are people worse at this game than I have been showing. <laughs> I mean... I understand they're completely new to the genre, but they are being paid money to play the game! I mean... Not even, again, going to Spyro here for a second. Not even Spyro was safe from the Dark Souls of, uh... You know, type of thing. Because when, uh... Uh, I was watching another YouTuber, um, Canadian, Canadian guy A, he, uh, he found an article saying something about that, and one of the comments from the person who wrote the article is it took them close to half an hour to beat Buzz in Spyro 3. That green lizard looking thing, Eternal? Yeah. 30 minutes. So, instead of him doing it, because he was going to be able to do it way less time than that, his wife has never played, you know, the Spyro games at all. So, he had her do it. She beat it in 10 minutes. Granted, again, it was her first time, and she really didn't know the controls like that. So, you know, he helped her very, very minimally. But... He helped her a little, he, you know, he helped her enough to get her to understand the controls. And she was able to beat it. You know, once she got the pattern, boom, it was done. That was it. That's all she needed. You know, sometimes I just don't get that style of reviewing to, to have someone who's never touched a game before. And let them write an interview. In my opinion, that should be the purest form that you have somebody actually do review it after playing it for the first time if it's their first ever video game. That would be right. an interesting review. But these are people who are paid to play them pretty much 24-7. Yep. And you're telling me they still can't do it properly. Again, I do it for entertainment purposes and then give a review at the end. Right. And then you have... And again, you know, with that with that guy, he was that annoyed with it that he, you know, he took to proving his... He took to having his wife prove this article completely wrong. But if you're going to have somebody play these games for review purposes... If it's their first time playing the game, sure. But 
don't get somebody that you that, that I mean, ugh, just the way the way it was done was just. Wait, but there's something else up there. No. It doesn't it doesn't seem like it's worth having somebody do that kind of thing. I don't know what's then, going here. And then expect them to be, you know, expect them to go, oh, you know, this game is the Dark Souls or whatever. It got so bad that it became a meme, pretty much. Yes, and I love me a good meme. But even then, I'm going to be the one guy who says it, although I'm pretty sure that a multiple dozen people have said it by now. Dark Souls 1 is not that hard. It's clunky. That's it. I will take his word on it. I have not really played any Dark Souls games. Because I know I'm not good at them. But that's just it. Oh my god, I hate that clean liquid. You don't necessarily have to be good at them, you just gotta get good at them. I hate to use that terminology, but that's the truth. They're a game that requires practice because they have really crap controls. Just like this requires a lot of practice to do as well. Platformers require a lot of patience and perseverance. Mm -hmm. And believe me. Especially this game, this particular game, it does take a lot of patience, but there are a lot of... A lot of games like that, where... You know, where patience is... You know, there are things that just have to be done. Take, uh... Mario 3D World. The uh, the one that the one that was released for the Switch recently, I got that for my mom because she wanted something else to play. A lot of the times, she'll you know constantly die at it and then she'll stop. But there's just apparently there's some sort of feeling inside her or something that just makes her go, you know what? I'm gonna try it again. Yep, all that requires is persistence, something that has been seemingly lost over the last few generations of humanity. Yeah. I really don't understand why. But we're not here for that kind of talk. We're here to watch me die. A lot. Because this is the Dark Souls of platforms. <laughs> <laughs> Which there is actually a lot of truth in that statement now looking at between the two games, but I'm not going to give the reporter credit on that. Right. Because that was not the reason why he said it. Which I bet that guy is pretty happy to, to know that, uh... To know that, you know, his phrase is being used all over the internet. He gets paid either way. Yeah. I just realized what I did to myself, and I want to take back everything I just did. <sighs> okay. And it looks like he's about to get in hit in the head with nine boxes. Ah, that's not too bad. Not as bad as double before. Now, an episode ago, I mentioned that I restarted playing Binding of Isaac because of Repentance. However, what I did not mention was I've also been playing the one on the Switch as well. And I unlocked the Forgotten. Legitimately. You want to talk about hell? That is hell. 
So much so, I'll actually go and explain it because I haven't played it. But I do know, I do know how to. I do. I have seen someone play it on YouTube as well. There is a there is a card within within uh within the Binding of Isaac that makes it so Isaac's mother will stomp down and wherever that card is used. It's usually it, it was actually meant to uh it was actually meant to take out enemies and stuff like that, but for some of the unlucky souls that use it, myself included, it stomps on you instead. If there's no enemies in the room. What Eternal is referring to with that is you have to beat the boss on the first floor in a minute and 15 seconds and then go back to the, and then go back to the room you started on and, you know, and dig up, uh, and dig up something. Once you do that, that's where the hell comes in. Because remember that remember that card called the High Priestess. Remember that card I mentioned in the beginning. That effect is constantly happening until you defeat and until you defeat uh, Mom. And she is actually grossly simplifying it because it's a lot worse than that. You have to make it to the boss, beat them in under a minute. Then you got to go back and bomb the main room that you started in, so you have to make sure the game didn't screw you out of a bomb. Then you have the constant effect where it stomps on you twice a room. Constantly. Now you can activate the broken shovel at any point, which is the item in question, to stop it for a room. A singular room. But yep. then it takes time to recharge. Yep. And you have to make it all the way to Boss Rush, which is... Past the first main boss, which is Mom herself. Beat the boss rush there to get the rest of the shovel. In under 20 minutes. Uh -huh. While having that constantly bombing you. Then you had to go all the way to the dark room, which means going through Mom's heart, the womb area, which if anyone who doesn't understand what that means, welcome to Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> Beat the womb, beat the heart, or it lives. Either one, they're the same thing. Yeah. Get to the dark room, which means beating Sheul, which means beating Satan. Yes, Satan. Then make it in down into that room, which is basically nothing but boss rushes. Find the room with a specific spot to dig, and then you have the forgotten. Uh -huh. Not a moment sooner. So to recap everything, first room you had to do under a minute. Survive all the way until Mom's Heart, which is six rooms. Don't die in Boss Rush. Beat Boss Rush. Get the Dark Room, which is another four floors. Find the specific room. And then dig them up. Which, for the record, if you don't have specific items that let you look at, uh, that let you look at the entire map, which even then, it's still a guessing game. Yeah, you're gonna have a bit of trouble. Like this whole map. What the hell is this? Done. Oh, it locks you on rails. That's what I do know. Huh? I said all I do know is I saw boxes over there where you died. Yeah, I couldn't make it over. It locked me in. But yeah, that's just to unlock the Forgotten. Which, admittedly, is the cool one of the coolest characters they ever added, but that's not the point. That yeah. was bad. And I have yet to unlock Greed on the Switch, so yeah! The Keeper, I'm sorry. Now, that he just explained is one of the tougher challenges. Some of the simpler ones they ask for are, well, pretty straightforward. Go a certain number of floors without taking damage. Do this, uh, beat this particular boss X amount of times. 
you know, really simple things. Then you have that. Admittedly, it was the last update to Afterbirth Plus before Repentance was announced. Yep. Which, again, I'm just going to say this because I know it pisses everyone off. It's just anti-birth. Yeah, if you've played the, bind the Binding of Isaac anti-birth, then you kind of know what this game has to offer. Maybe That's a couple less characters, but... Yeah, it's it's basically that game. That being said, anti-birth was amazing, so... Yeah, I mean, I've never played it. But... I'm still trying to get through just base, you know, Afterbirth Plus at this point. Yeah. I was doing so good, too! You were. And I mean, even then, Rebirth, I had only just started before getting into Afterbirth, uh, Afterbirth at all. And I have Eternal to thank for that, actually. He let me try it out on the 3DS, and it was one of those games, and I'm sure anybody who's played video games has found that particular game, where you go in, you're doing fine, and then you, you know, you lose in the beginning. You know, kind of, kind of early, and you're just like, I feel like I can go further than this. Five hours later. <laughs> Yes, it's one of those one more time again kind of games. Yeah. And my first what five attempts, I almost made it to Mom's foot. So with a relatively decent uh, decent build of had of having like self sustained health for a while. Yeah. So it was one of those things. It was like, I, I, I'll try. I'll try it. I'll try it again. I'll try it again. And for those wondering, I've been thinking about doing it for the channel, but I'm not sure if I should. There's enough people doing it. I'm basically adding nothing about new of value. Yeah. Uh. But if he decides not to, and you're looking for a couple of people who are more than, you know, are looking for a couple of people who are trying it out and went and see if you want to give it a shot yourself. First no. of all, I encourage it. I really encourage you to actually just grab the game for yourself and try it that way. But in those particular in those particular senses, we have huts. Uh, I often watch his I watch his content quite a bit. Tear of Grace, somebody else Red. I watch. And yeah. You mean to tell me that was a yellow gem run? Great. You know what? We'll come back to these in a separate episode. We're just going to go through them right now. <laughs> and then, well, uh, he kind of uploads these much too frequently for most people in my opinion, but Northern Lion is another person I actually do watch here and there. A lot of times I'll use his playlist as a, uh, as a bit of white noise to help me sleep at night. Yeah, but that being said, Northern Lion is good at what he does. Mm-hmm. He is pretty good at it. Though if I had to choose two to watch right off the bat, Bread and Huts come to mind. Mm-hmm. Which I'll admit, I'm even in touch a little bit because his he makes he makes the he makes the content kind of funny. A lot of uh, a lot of my favorite episodes are more of his uh, are obviously his distress, but a lot of times he shouted at he shouted the creator of the Mighty Classic and well, or he calls out Tom Cruise. He was doing that for a while. I mean, that's just natural. I do it all the time. After all, I'm about to ask Tom Cruise to help me with this running, because he's a master at running. Mm 
No mafiosos. Of course! I was doing so well! But leave it to the platforming to kill me. <laughs> ah! But yeah. When it comes to when it comes to the binding of us at all, I'm actually still learning a lot of the ropes. So I still have characters that Eternal has unlocked that I haven't even either haven't touched or unlocked myself in the Switch version. Or the PC version for that matter. Or the 3DS version. Well that We bought a lot I, of versions. I I I actually had a decent amount of people unlocked in there that for some reason I can't seem to replicate here <laughs> upon the Switch, so that's where you gotta remember the wise words. Have confidence! Yeah, and I usually go in there with confidence. Like, there's a challenge <laughs> I still have to do. I still have to do now that I'm uh, having a hard time with. Ah, oh, I almost lived. Wait a minute, can I just get up on that first block and watch them all explode? Probably. Never Wait. hurts to try. You can't jump up on it. Let me rephrase. I can't jump up on it. I probably can't either. I'm not gonna lie to you. But yeah, I know I'm discussing uh, Binding of Isaac a lot right now, but that's because it's actually a really good game. Edmund McMillan hit it out of the park with that and Super Meat Boy, at least the original. We're not going to discuss Super Meat Boy forever anymore. I have yet to ever really experience it or anything like that, but I heard that they changed it. A little too much. It should not be an auto runner. Hooray, you did it! But you died. Yeah. Because I suck. Yep. And let's wrap up this episode with Pinstripe Potoro. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, I think, uh... I think him and Tana end up becoming a thing at one point. Pinstripe and... Yep. Oh, right, gotta wait for him to reload. That's right. The, uh... I don't remember... I don't remember, um how that went down. I don't know if it's in the after credit, if it's during the credits for uh, for this that it's mentioned, but I don't know. Somewhere down the line, uh, Pinstripe and Tana got, got together. So I don't think uh, Tana and Crash are beating as of this point, but... Where am I supposed to hide at that point? He can hit you behind that spot over there. Apparently so. And for some reason that time, he just didn't decide to duck. Okay, why couldn't he duck? Really? Put up a 
So you're mean, meaning to tell me that the best strategy here is to pull a Luigi. I guess so. Okay, why didn't he duck that time? Could it be a touch of latency with the control? No, because it requires you to stop. Mm. And then he jumps up. I'm not moving. Nope. He's gonna force it, isn't it? And that'll wrap up this episode with a rather lame boss, and I'm not even going to lie. Where it just requires you to stand in one corner and only pop out every so often. The Luigi method. You be nice to Luigi. I am being nice. Crash isn't. Anyways, I'll catch you all in the next episode. Have a good one. See you later. <laughs>